Ahoy! Today we are talking about Reddit Oscar, and we're talking about some very, very interesting stuff regarding this guy, because a lot of the things that you know about Reddit Oscar, or that you would think about Reddit Oscar's Akon especially, are maybe not quite how they seem. Now I'm not saying that everything you know about him is wrong, but a lot of things are very misleading and some things are very much wrong in terms of perception when you look at the Acorns. And that's no one's fault, but, well, hybrid design choices maybe. Because realistically, these are not things that you would know or expect unless you specifically test that out. This video will include some numbers, but to not drag it out too much, I will keep those aspects relatively brief. And if you want to look at them closer, then pause the video at the corresponding moments. At the background you can already see some of what is possible with one of the builds that we're going to look at. But we're also going to talk about a lot of general things regarding Reddit Oscar and how his things function. In order to do that we need to look at the acorns first. The four acorns that we have in the game all have a relatively dedicated function that is kind of explained from what they have as their passive as well as the additional effects. And I would call that the perceived effect. So in case of the evergreen acorn, that's obviously more health and more sustain. This is the one we're not going to look into in more detail because there's really not much to it. It's just there. It's a tanky acorn and it's countered by anti-heal and late game you probably want to swap it out for Stone of Gaia anyways. The other three are more interesting. Now with Thick Bark Acorn, it's first of all important to know what it actually does. It gives you 10% extra protections. And when you deal damage with an ability to an enemy guard, not mentioned in the description at all, good job Hyrus, then you restore 3% of your maximum health. This acorn also allows you to use flurry twice. What is important here is that while the protection reduction on the target does not stack, your protection gain stacks. So if you use this on an enemy twice in a row, they will only lose the protections once, but you will get their protections twice. And better yet, if you hit multiple targets, you get all of their protections. So if you use both of your flurries in the middle of two to three people, you will get a massive amount of extra protections for a while. And by a while, I mean three seconds. However, if you wait a little bit between the first flurry and the second flurry, it'll actually refresh the protections, so you can keep them longer if you space it out, but Normally you won't have enemies that close together for that long, so you might want to use them right after each other anyways. So hypothetically this would be a defensive acorn, but we'll look at that in more detail in a little bit. Next we'll look at Bristlebush acorn. This one comes with 35 physical power, so 10 more than the defensive acorns, has 20% critical strike chance and various effects for the dart. Dart deals 35% increased damage and can critically strike. When dart damages an enemy, Ratoska gains 10% physical lifesteal and 10% basic attack damage for 6 seconds. So everything in this acorn indicates that it's the crit acorn. It gives you crit as an additional effect, it gives you crit as a stat, and it gives you lifesteal and basic attack damage so you can focus on building crit. And that is primarily how it is used at the moment. Last but not least, there is Thistlethorn acorn. This one gives you even more power, 45 power, so 20 more than the defensive options. And outside of that it only has a passive, it doesn't have any other additional effects. And the passive is that Acorn Blast now fires 5 Acorns instead of 3. However, the width is not increased or anything, so there's just more Acorns close together. And enemies hit by Acorn Blast are debuffed, taking 5% additional damage from Tosca's abilities, but actually also his basic attacks, stacking up to 3 times, so up to 15% extra damage for everything that follows. So technically you'd think this is the ability based acorn if you don't want to go into crit and you want to focus on ability damage and penetration. To keep things simple, from here on out I will refer to the thick bark acorn as the prod or shred acorn, to the bristle bush one as the crit acorn, and the thistle thorn acorn is the blast acorn. Now something that is very important to keep in mind with a Blast Acorn is while these values sound high at first, if you hear that it has 5 shots instead of 3, there are some changes to Acorn Blast as well. Successive shots of Acorn Blast reduce the damage. The first da shot does 100% damage, the second one 75%, third one 50% and the last additional two only do 25% of the full damage. For the other acorns, that doesn't change all too much. If you look at the stats here, I have the stats for rank 1 and rank 5. Really, it's a very minor damage loss, but then you get some extra scaling, so that's okay. There's not really much of a damage difference. 
For the new Blast Acorn, it actually makes quite a big difference, because while you get two additional shots, these shots only deal a fraction of the normal damage. But at the same time, something that's not explained in the item description, the effect of the Blast Acorn affects itself. In other words, when you're using your three, the second shot will already get the amplification of the first shot. So the first shot is not increased, the second shot is increased by 5%, the third shot is increased by 10%, and the fourth and fifth shot are both increased by 15% in damage. What that results in is something you can see here, on the left side the damage without the amplification, on the right side with the amplification as it works in-game. It's not a massive increase, but it is a little bit of damage here and there. Now resulting from that, there is an important question. Do you want to use your 2 or your 3 first when engaging on an enemy? In an ideal scenario anyway, sometimes you don't get to choose. Because the 3 increases your ability damage from other abilities, but the 2 reduces the enemy's protections, meaning that the damage of your 3 will be increased through that. First of all, I have to say, I think it's a really stupid mechanic to put two different amplifiers on a guard in that order because it kind of counteracts with each other, but it is what it is and you'll see why I find it that annoying. If we look at level 3 and you have all abilities on rank 1, then the total damage with the Blast Acorn if you use the 3 first is 395. If however you use the 2 before the 3, then the total damage is 388. So at this point it makes sense to use the 3 before the 2. But now let's look at level 20 against a target with base protections and a full build. Our build here is going to be whichever Acorn we're going to be using, so Blast Acorn first. Jotun's Wrath, Brawler's Beatstick, Arendite, Soul Eater and Heartseeker. This is going to be the build we're using for everything, just a ability based, a little bit of CR, a little bit of pen everything, you know. A standard build that could work well if you're not building defense. At this point, if you're using a 3 first, then the total damage of a combo is 1523. But if we're using the 2 first at this point, then our total damage is 1538. So in early game it's better to use the Acorn Blast first, but in late game it's better to use the 2 first. That is completely confusing because there's no way you can keep track on which point of the game which order is better. Obviously there is only a minimal damage difference here, so it's not a major deal, but if it makes a difference between a kill or not getting a kill, then I think it's stupid. I think there should just be a better way to implement both damage amplifiers on one ability and then make the other abilities benefit from that. But now let's take a step back to level 3, because while we have looked at the Blast Acorn, we have not looked at the other acorns yet. And there's some really interesting stuff here. If we're using the Shred Acorn instead, then we can use the 2 twice. In that case, our total ability damage is actually higher. We actually end up with 400 damage. Now it is worth noting that at this point of the game it's likely you would get more damage out of doing additional basic attacks which you cannot do while using the two. So effectively you'll probably still end up with a little less damage, but at least in terms of AoE ability damage the two will actually do more for you. And then I also want to have a look at the crit acorn because that actually increases your ability damage as well. In this case we end up with 342 ability damage overall, so at least here we can safely say that in early levels the ability damage with the crit acorn is lower in return for getting crit. And lifesteal and extra basic attack damage for whatever reason. But now let's have a look at level 20. Reminder with the blast acorn we did roughly 1530 damage. With the shred acorn we actually do 1831 now. Significantly higher, still something that can be offset by basic attacks, but especially if you hit multiple targets I would say the Shred Acorn is ahead here. And with the Crit Acorn, we deal 1443 damage. That is slightly lower than the Blast Acorn, but not as much as you would expect. The damage from the 1 can offset that very nicely, and if you crit with the 1, then obviously you have way higher damage. Even if you just get a single crit on a basic attack at some point in your chain, it should definitely offset the damage difference without building any more crit than the Crit Acorn itself. At this point, let's have a quick breather and summarize what we found out so far. The highest ability damage acorn, purely speaking from ability damage, is the Shred Acorn, which is meant to be a defensive acorn and comes with a lot of other benefits aside of that as well. The Blast Acorn's damage, all things considered, isn't significantly higher due to the reduction factor that plays a major role when it comes to pure ability damage and it may be better to just go into the Crit Acorn even when going for an ability build because if you just get a single crit in between, if you're just a little bit lucky with a basic attack, it may just be higher damage already 
even if you don't have any liquid items. But there are some even more important factors to consider here. Remember how earlier I said that the Blast Acorn doesn't actually just affect ability damage but basic attack damage as well? So every basic attack that you use after you use your 3 will deal 15% extra damage. And as things happen to be in Smite, that scales wonderfully with items like Hydra's Lament as well as Crit. So the Acorn that's meant to be ability based may actually be a good choice for Crit. If you look at the stats here, these are the stats for our Blast Acorn. Uh, with Hydras, on the left side you see how much damage you deal after using a 3 or a 3 and 2 with a normal basic attack, that's just from all the other amplifying effects. And on the right side you see how much damage you would do with Hydras instead. The build remains the same, the only item that's swapped out is Joel's Wrath for Hydras Lament. If we compare that to the Crit Acorn, you can see the same values for the same tests here, and you can see that the damage is actually lower. This is because the Crit Acorn comes with less power and the Amplifier is just 10% as opposed to the Blast Acorn's 15%. In order to see how much we could get out of a Hydra's build if we include Crit, I made a new build. So this one is Thistlethorn, Hydra's Lament, Malice and Deathbringer for very high crits and frequent crits, as well as Atalantis and Bloodforge, but these are very interchangeable. The result here are basically Mercury-esque numbers, with up to 910 on a crit if you're able to use your 3 and 2, whereas most of the time you'll actually just use the 3 and a basic attack afterwards, and then probably straight into the 1 just for another basic attack cancel, and that should be enough. It depends a little bit on which filler items you use, if you for example need a Magi's Cloak instead of Atalantis, then obviously your damage will be a fair bit lower, and then you might have to swap out Bloodforge for something with Pen as well. I tried this build in actual games as well, and Unfortunately, multiple of them were surrendered relatively early, but I can tell you that overall it works surprisingly well. I later adapted a version where I would include Jolton's Wrath at an early point to have some extra pen and CDR, and then just trade that out later on. Now why would you want to run that build over the Crit Acorn when the Crit Acorn comes with 20% native crit? The reason is simple. This build allows you to deal a lot of damage without sacrificing your main engaging and chasing and escape tool right away. The crit acorn builds up on engaging with your dash, which once upon a time made sense when Red Tusker had multiple dashes, but in its current state is actually the most underperforming acorn that he has, because it's incredibly risky, the one is not that easy to confirm in my opinion, it's one of the more delayed dashes with a relatively small radius as well, small area as well that hits. And overall, especially if you're not super mechanically skilled, I think there are many situations where you just end up mispositioning yourself and taking way more damage and not dealing nearly as much as you'd want to. The 3 on the other hand is still not super easy to confirm, only the 2 is really easy to confirm, but it is significantly easier to confirm in most situations unless the enemy jukes excessively uh, than the 1. Also it sets up much more reliably for follow-up basic attacks and you can basically combo so quickly that the enemy almost has no time to react at all if you go from the 3 into the 1 and that way you can also confirm the 1 for free as well. Obviously this playstyle is also possible with the crit acorn, it's just typically not encouraged because some benefits only happen after you use your dash. Now it is worth pointing out that this build is somewhat cheesy and it's not entirely without shortcomings. It relies on Hydra's Lament, something that is very very risky at the moment in general, it's not a favorite item by many, and there's one huge problem with it. And that is that Hide of the Nemean Lion counters this build excessively. If any squishy builds Hide of the Nemean Lion, you basically have to ignore them. Your ability damage is already reduced, but that's not the biggest deal here. The biggest deal here is that the two hits that will basically one-shot them if they connect, will both not happen. Because you use your 3 and then use a basic attack, it won't happen because it'll get absorbed, and then you use your 1 and use another basic attack, and it'll also get absorbed. And if you use the 2 in between, they probably have too much time to get away or do something to counter you, so that's not necessarily an option. Aegis and Beats can be worked around better, especially with your ultimate and everything, but still are also a risk, but Hydra the Nemean Lion just completely destroys this build. But I guess such is the crit Hydra's life and it's not really different for the crit acorn either. But something interesting about the crit acorn at this point. What I noticed is that the duration of the blast acorn is actually just 4 seconds. But the crit acorn lasts for 6 seconds for whatever reason. And that got me thinking too. What if the crit acorn is actually used as a bruiser acorn? And what I wanted to see here, I just used the same damage build, is the damage output that you have with serrated edge. If you use that instead of the other combo. And the interesting thing here is if you get all of your abilities on cooldown, 
then you actually do 382 damage with a basic attack, where Hydras does 455, but every basic attack after that for quite a while remains amplified as well. The biggest factor in this is actually Flurry running out, which is why you might want to use that last. But that means that due to the long duration of the crit acorn passive, as well as all the additional stats on that item which really benefit just sustained boxing due to the lifesteal as well and the increased basic attack damage, this may actually be a very interesting build path. You could actually choose to build the crit acorn but then transition further into something like Frostbound and go into a bruiser build, or maybe even hasten Katana and go into a more basic attack focus build. A 10% amplifier shouldn't be underestimated and the fact that Red Tosca has multiple very quick basic attacks means that generally he would also be a great user of kin size anyways. This is obviously a whole lot more experimental than going for the crit build on the Blast Acorn, but still I wanted to point out that there are these interesting mechanics in his items that are not very obvious because there's no information about duration or what these things actually affect. As for the current balance of the acorns, part of the reason why I did all of this with a blast acorn is because I'm expecting it to get some buffs eventually, because as of now that item just has way less beneficial stats than for example the crit acorn. It's interesting that it can still work well enough if you use it in the right way and I can see why they don't want to put flat pen on it for example, but I do find it very weird that it only has 10 extra power when the other one has 20% extra crit, which is a massive difference in stats, especially if you also get an ability that can crit and the fact that the Acorn Blast basically reduces itself, so making it work is something that is more thinking around the corner rather than actually going with how you would think this item works. I for one will probably mostly resort to the Shred Acorn and just build defense items that benefit from going in the middle of a crowd and just spam that too and do decent amounts of damage that I now have confirmed are actually pretty high even in comparison to the damage builds while also being super tanky, which I think is a very fun interaction and a fun way to play. I hope this was interesting and insightful. If you're new to the channel, feel the sub button and maybe the bell so you get notified of upcoming videos. We'll talk about countering Tsukuyomi very soon, so I think that'll be something that'll be helpful for many of you. And on that, see you for the next one soon. Duke Sloth, out.